Okay, when I'm doing my engines, the first thing I do is I'll, I'll de-seam them, put them together to this point, and uh, sand the seams off, get all that out of the way first before I do anything else. And then I'll take and I'll put my exhaust manifolds up against them and find out let me see if I can get this in focus and find out where the spark plugs are supposed to go. And I mark it with a pencil on both sides. Okay. And then I take my drill. This is the drill kit that I used. I'm going to pause this just a second. Okay. This is the drill bits that I use. And I'll put a link down below where I got them. I, they are an Amazon purchase. Um, nothing special they're just finger bits different sizes from that all the way down to holy crap size this is way too small for what I want to do anything with and then you find out well I actually need that but what I do is I'm using solder and I'll leave a link down below that's 0.3 millimeter rosin core solder this works so nice although this one-handed deal I got to get my tripod set up down here what I'm gonna do is I'll take a piece of solder and then I match my drill bit for it it's the orange believe it or not it'd be 0.3 millimeter that I use which is my lavender color. See there? I'll take that and now before I prime or anything and you see what I do to hold my engines I'll just kind of push this in a little bit so it doesn't doesn't slip out and don't push it in far enough to where you're splitting your glue. But I will drill these eight holes before on either side before I prime and then once I prime and paint, I'll come back and I will poke those holes back open again. But they'll be there and it'll be easier than trying to do it after it's primed and painted. And uh, I don't want to scratch the paint. So let me drill these holes. And it's just a finger bit. You know, I'm not going to try to do this with one hand. It's just a finger bit. You put it in, twist it, let it go in twist it back out, make yourself a nice hole, do it a couple of times, it'll be big, but once you get your paint and your primer in there, it closes up. So when you run that drill bit through that paint and primer again, it makes a nice perfect size hole. So let me get that done and I will bring you back. Okay, 10 minutes later, eight holes drilled. Simple as that. Well, and they're drilled big enough to where the bit will fall out. Now that bit, is the exact same size as the copper in a Cat5 strand. And I use, gee whiz, this is difficult. I use the copper or the Cat5 line for my heater hoses and my medium size hoses, um, like my PCV valves. I already drilled, while I had that bit out, I already drilled my valve covers for that. What I need to do next is, I got excited last night and I painted that aluminum. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill the hole in the front for my radiator bypass. I'm gonna drill the hole in the side over here for my heater hose, which doesn't, they don't even have a, a spot for it, but I just eyeball it, it looks great. That'll be for that, I'm gonna have a hole drilled in the back side over here somewhere for the uh, brake booster. It comes off of the firewall and just kind of disappears in here. I'm making this one with the air cleaner is going to be attached. It's not going to be removable. So I can just kind of hide that underneath. And you'll see what I'm talking about. It works out great. Those uh, positive crankcase vents this one's going to run all the way around the carburetor and come in this side. This one comes up and goes up underneath where the air cleaner is. 
And again, we're gonna cheat that so you can't see it. The heater lines, they're simple. We're gonna make those. Now this is, like I said, this is the lead wire for the uh, lead wire, solder wire for the small lines, the uh, spark plug lines and other things of that size. Radiator overflow, um, windshield washer hose I even, I even used it for, it worked out perfect. This is another spool of solder that I have. Um, get the size off of there. But what I'm gonna do with that, that's my heater hose. And it is the perfect size for that. And man, I'm telling you, you just take it in your fingers and you can bend that around to wherever you want it to go. So we're gonna have to drill out the firewall in the back because I'm almost 100% sure this kit doesn't even have a mark for it. But we'll drill out the firewall in the back and we'll use my purple bit to drill this out on the intake and on the water pump. I'll also use this in the front here. Jeez, get my hand out of the way. I'll use it in the front for the bypass line because crying out loud, I can make this thing so small without kinking it that it's not even funny. And then you just take it and I use my Tamiya rubber rubber black and I use that for my heater hoses um, all the hoses and a lot of the electric lines not sure what color I'm gonna use I'm gonna paint my spark plug lines yet so we'll see I'm gonna throw a thing out on on Facebook and see what everybody else thinks but again the water pumps gonna need drilled out I will do that once it's attached and that'll be for the heater hose and for the uh, thermostat bypass line I also have, I mean, it's a nice looking alternator, so I'm gonna probably drill one line into that and then run that for the electric line coming off of the alternator. The distributor, we're gonna see how it fits in the kit. Those pins, focus, the pins aren't very high, but I'm gonna probably shave them down a notch just to uh, make everything fit. But again, when we go to do that, you're going to be amazed at how simple this is. So stand by. Let me get the engine painted and primed, primed and painted, get uh, ready to put it together. So we'll stop from here. Let me get all that done. You don't need to see me paint and prime. You, you guys all know how to do that. So I'll bring you back when we're ready to start running lines. All right, welcome back. As you can see on the engine, I've got a lot more built. I love this little holder. Everything's put together on it, basically. I remember we drilled the holes for the spark plugs on both sides. I also have drilled a hole for my heater hose bypass, the heater hose on the off the intake, the heater hose coming out of the radiator, I've drilled holes for the positive crankcase ventilators on both sides. I've also drilled a hole in the top of the coil. And you'll see what happens. That's so we can come back to the engine or to the, the distributor. So I have one more thing to do. And I wanted to show you because it's kind of, well, I have two more things to do that are kind of important to do before. I lay in the spark plugs. One of them is this positive crankcase vent comes around the top of the engine and ties in on the bottom side of the carburetor over here. The other one is my brake booster. I want to run a brake booster line and that comes around and ties in somewhere over here, which on this engine, I'm going to glue down my air cleaner so that's gonna hide a multitude of sins and we can kind of fudge where these lines actually lay in. They don't have to be perfect, they're gonna be hidden. But trust me, you run those little positive crankcase vents, 
This one goes to the bottom of the air cleaner. I'm just going to come up and over underneath the bottom of the air cleaner and just drop it off there. And again, like I said, this one comes all the way around the front. You'll be able to see the hose run around the front. You'll be able to see this one drop in. You'll be able to see the booster come over. But they have to kind of go close to where they're going because it'll show if you don't. So let me take my little case of drill bits. And for the booster, or the, the crankcase vent, and well, yeah, and the booster, I'm going to use a piece of Cat5 wire, orange wire, blue wire, green wire. These things are perfect for that because I can bend them pretty tight and they're solid. They stay in. They don't kink as easy as this solder that I'm going to use, which is exactly the same diameter. I found this. Um, I've had this for years. A buddy of mine, Scott, gave this to me with an awesome soldering gun. And uh, this just happened to work out perfect for the same size as the cat line. With these, I'm going to have to drill, I drill a smaller hole. I'm actually drilling my orange hole because it's the same size as the copper core. And what I'll do with these and is I'll strip this back just a little bit like this. Freeze up some wire. And I can take that. And since I already have this one hole, I can show you real quick. This will fit right down snug inside there with no problems. And then when I bend it, I can bend it over a 90 and wrap it around and it just fits out perfect. So let me drill the hole on this side for this and this side for the intake for the booster. And I will be right back. I am going to bring you back. I was thinking what just before I started doing this, some people have never used a, a little twist drill. So all this does is goes in. The crankcase vent goes right about here on my carburetor and just push down a little bit while you twist it or drop it. And I like to get it in there quite a ways. You're not going to hurt anything going in. And you saw I dropped this in between the intake and the carburetor. So there's a start, and that's all you do. You just twist it, take your time, get in there, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch or so. So you have room enough to get the thing bent around, forced in there, and then a little tab of glue to hold it in place. Because I don't want to glue on my chrome because it will off-gas and mess the chrome up. This side, the chrome's already messed up because basically it was on so thin that it, when I touched it, the whole the chrome just wiped clean off. So that's Molotile ink pen on there right now. And that did a great job. That is liquid chrome. It it literally saved that. I mean it's a little bit wavy, but at least it's not white or whatever. And I'm not trying to airbrush chrome. I'm my airbrush skills are very limited. I can do all this real fancy detail work, but then when it comes to the airbrush, I'm five thumbs. So let me finish drilling this hole out. I'll drill the hole out right here on the intake, and then I'll bring it back. Okay, I drilled the hole in here deep enough to where this will come around, and I can I can strip the wire back a little bit, put it in there. The one I was talking about for the brake booster, again, I forgot before I started talking, that brake booster comes around and we're just going to fudge it in there. I'm not going to drill it in anywhere. This is a Chevy engine and not a, on a Mopar. It comes in and goes into the intake over here. And it really shows up on a high riser. So I had to drill. You, you got to drill it in there to, to hide it. This one underneath this, as long as I get it underneath the, uh, between the carburetor and the air cleaner, we're good. So I put my Cat5 wire down inside the, the thing and I'm bringing it around. And what I'm going to do, this is easy peasy. We're just going to take this with my thumb and I'm going to bend it around where it's got to go. Keeping, trying to keep it in the hole here. 
tweezers are awesome. Take my tweezer, come around, give it a good bend, get it down. My hole is right here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to start giving it a good shot right there. Now see how that wraps around the front of the carb just like it's supposed to. And it's in and I'm running high. I will take my snip and I'm going to come a little bit long. Always go long. Cut it. Now we're down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that out of there. Get the engine out of the way. This is the first time I've ever done this on camera. And trust me, it's kind of weird. But I'm going to go that far back, which is less than I drilled, and just strip the wire off. Just like you were doing electric with it. Leave a little bit of the copper. Get your engine back. Trade fingers because I'm right-handed. Get that back in the hole, which is the hardest part right here. Now I'm in. I'm bringing it around. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to start bending it until it, I can get it into that intake. Well, really, it's not the intake. It's the bottom of the carburetor where we're going with that. And there we go. I'm in. I'm wide, but I'm in. So I got the basic length. Now I'm going to come and I'm going to cut half of what I stripped off. And watch what this does here. I'm going to squeeze it. And push it in that hole like that. And now if I let that go, it ain't going nowhere. It's pinned in. But if I do that again, it did fall out, which is cool because it's got to come out. Now I have the shape. And the reason why I use the Cat 5 on this is because I want to be able to repeat the insert here. I want to be able to put that swing it around, thumb up, get this, and be able to drop it in that hole every time. Now I'm gonna bring it up cheap, push past it. See there, I just turned it, it, it's long, over top of the carburetor. I'm gonna come down, pull it out snug, drag it down over, and now it's in there. It will hold itself in, won't drop out. All you need to do is pull that back a little bit. Make sure that you got room to put your um, radiator hose in. Usually I cut it off, but I didn't want to cut it off the sprue yet because I will absolutely lose it. But you can see this comes in over here. Big ass knuckles. This will come in over here and it'll tuck in there out of the way. So I'm good to go with that one. Now what I gotta do is I gotta pull it out just enough to release it. And it's released. So I'll take it and I'm gonna hold it just like this with an alligator clip. Grab a hold of it. is harder to do on camera than it is without. Now there it is. And that's all we need to do right now. I'm going to take this and set it off to the side because when it comes time to painting the other hoses, I'll have it. And I use XF85 rubber black. This is awesome stuff. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in my stand out of the way. Done. Now, the boring part. Clear up a little bit. Get stuff out of the way. And I'm kind of trying to do real time. Just so you can see. it. it it's a little finicky, but it does take some time and it's not a whole lot. And here's what I do now. I need eight of these, and I 
there's there's a lot of solder on there so i'm not worried about being a little bit wasteful so what i do is i come to about halfway back the side of the transmission and i'll cut a piece off just like that straighten it out and when i straighten it out I figure this thing's wrapped up and say it's it comes off here and it's bent back like that no problem take it hold it in your two fingers like this grab it with your fingers and just give it a tug i love working with this stuff now i'm what every block's an inch so i'm about an inch and three quarters on this and i just go to town and i'm going to cut eight of these all right i'm bringing it back there's eight but we need one for a coil line and that's I'm gonna do I don't know three quarters of an inch or so doesn't matter as long as you make it long enough you don't want it to be too short now there is something you got to think about this is gonna fit in here like this Good golly, Miss Molly. There's probably a thousand people right now going, no, you idiot, it goes there. But it's hard to see. There we go. <laughs> All right, we want to put this on here, and I want to kind of slide this on. my body. And kind of figure where that thing's going to sit because we want to see how high that distributor is to the top of this because we want to be able to make sure that our hood fits. You only mess this up once. If your hood doesn't fit, it's it's kind of defeats the purpose. But you can see I got a I got a good amount of room there, so we can have a whole lot of fun with these wires. Pull this back apart. Get it out the way. Grab the engine off of there. Get it out the way. Move this out of the way. And now. We got all of got all of our uh, wires. I'm just taking them, and I'm gonna put them in my clothespins on a budget. Even my airbrush, and that's probably why my airbrush brushing is so poor, is because I got it from Harbor Freight. All right, I got all those on there. Next thing I need to do is get my hand back in front of the camera 12 times. I'm going to take some Elmer's glue. Open the jar. Take some Elmer's glue and put any white glue and put it in there in a cap and some just just a place to work. And I'll show you on this twice. You know, you don't you're not going to want to watch me. I'm not doing this to my coil wire. It just, it doesn't work out. I tried it and it's just like, no, that just looks bad. But take that, make a little ball. Let me back these up. Get a little ball of, of glue on there. Come down maybe a quarter of an inch. And just, it'll pull itself off of the, see how I'm ring, going around in a circle? And it's pulling itself off. Come back at it and there it goes it makes a little bead and then you just set that down and i'm gonna let that dry overnight so this is one of those things you prep up to and then you push it off the side and you go i don't know do something that people don't expect airbrush some smoke onto your window or like i said you can dry brush this 
or whatever you want. Make it, make it yours. Make it different than everybody else's. And dang it, don't worry about doing it the way the box shows. Do it the way you want. This is your kit. I need a bigger bottle or a bigger bob. It's your kit. Make it the way you want it. If you want this thing to look like some kind of a space vehicle and you like it that way, that's cool, man, because that's the way you want to see it. Build it for you. And trust me, when you build it for you and and you back it, everybody else will like it too because it, it it's just going to be right. It's dry down here. This glue is drying quick. But see, there's, there's another one. And now what that'll do is that'll look like a boot when I put it in there. So I'm going to do the rest of these, and we're going to let them sit overnight. And then tomorrow I'll bring you back, and we'll continue on with painting the wires. And try once you paint the wire, you don't have to wait another overnighter. Paint the wires, let it go for 20 minutes. Let that paint dry on there. And then you can wire them up, because you're going to have to come back and touch them up anyhow. And I'll show you that even, too. So I'll do the rest of these. We'll do an overnighter, let that glue dry nice and, and solid, and then I will be back tomorrow with you to show you how we wire this in, and it's so stinking easy. Literally, if I can do this, anybody can. This is the magic tool, is that drill bits. Once you get the drill bits, grab yourself that solder. Everybody's got white glue. You can pick that up at the dollar store. You can pick these up. I buy these at the dollar store. They're, they're dirt cheap. It's probably two bucks for these. Okay, it's been about just about exactly 24 hours since I had you here yesterday. And our um, Elmer's glue has dried to a little bead on our solder. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to paint the color of the lines. And I put out on the web page what color should I use, and I got back yellow. So it's going to look like the old Excel wires. So like I said, this is solder. You can see it's very easily bent. So what I'm going to do is take a nice soft brush and just work my way. the solder. Now I'm using flat yellow on this. Come all the way up and don't worry about just hitting the bead. As a matter of fact, I will paint it this time here to show you how big it is. And all that is is a representation of the boot that's going on. So once this is dry, I will paint the boot a well excel if i remember right on my car i had excel wires and coil and that boot was gray so gray it will be and you see i'm i'm hitting all sides of this wire to get that to cover and then trust me when we bend these it will split and break a little bit but 90% of it will stay on, and we'll have a good-looking wire. So that's one. I got eight more and the coil wire to do. You don't want to see me paint all these, so I'll bring you back when these are all painted and dry. All right. Let's do these wires. Now, remember I told you to leave that about a quarter inch long. Well, here's what we're going to do. Everything's dry here. I got that extra quarter inch. And I'm going to just take this and set it in the hole. And look. Now if you can see, that one actually dropped all the way in there. Touched all the way down to the boot. So now what I'm going to do is this is what I use. Is like I say, I think I got this on Amazon. I don't remember. It's been like two years ago now so i'm going to take that and a little pill cap and i'm going to put a drop 
just like that. I'm gonna put the cap back on this because that's why I had to get this a couple years ago because I forgot to put the cap back on. Now we've fitted it. We're gonna take it completely out. I'm gonna run it in the, in the glue, come back and drop it back in the hole. Just like that. Let's do another one. Always test them. Make sure that they will drop all the way to the boot. My hand is right in the way, isn't it? Let's do it like this. Let me set that down. I'm going to turn this just a smidge. These things are so thin, I have to pick them up with tweezers. All right, I'm going to take it. Jeez, I can't see the hole. We're going to fit it in the hole. It does go all the way to the boot. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to get a little bit of glue. And drop it in the boot. <laughs> drop it in the boot. Drop it in the engine. Now I can see right off the rip that that one's too long. We got too much solder on the end of it, and it's going to hit the back before the boot hits. So I'm just going to take my snips, and I'm going to cut off about that much. I hope that shows up. And again, let's take and dip. Put it in. It's this easy, guys. I'm not kidding. I don't know if you would win any competitions with this or not. Again, a little bit too long. But... Y'all see how it looks on the finish, on the finished kit from my uh, AAR CUDA that I just did. So, you know, they look good. All right. That's half the engine. It took a while to get to this point, but once you're here, it goes on quick. I'm going to let this dry a little bit. And then I'm going to roll it over, and I'll do the other ones off camera. It's the same thing on the other side of the engine. I will bring you back when all these things are pointing out. All right, it's been all of about five minutes, and that glue is set. It, it seems like the glue dries faster with the solder. So this is what I had. Remember, we did that side. I did the same thing on this side. Now, what we're going to do... Just take your finger and bend them up. Look at how easy it is to work with this solder. And check it out. There's your boots. Now, what we're going to do is starting in the back two, we're going to start running our wires. I have a toothpick, my thumb, tweezers. These are my favorite tweezers. I think if I lost them, I would die. And I use an old pair of snips. These are my good spruce snips that I use all the time for them. This is what I use with my wires and stuff like that. It's been around for a while. So, now there's... You can sit down if you look. Right here you see my circle. This was the firing order for the CUDA. I did it just because the guy goes, Huh, next time do the firing order. And I did. So, it, it was fun. But you don't need to. And I'm not going to do this on here because... I'm trying to make it as easy for everybody else as I can. So now watch this. We're going to just roll this one over and get it 
across the top and I'm looking for no gap under or between the wire and the valve cover. Gravity doesn't let the wire sit way up in the air or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick a spot on this distributor. Let's say right there. Good enough, why not? Now we're going to take the snips and I'm going to come about that far. And now I'm going to take my tweezer and I'm going to push. I hope you can see this. I'm really trying. I'm going to push this down in here a little bit and make a little bit of an arch just like that. I say just like that a lot on my other channel too. Now with the tweezers, just take and bend this around and stop where you want it. I am not going to glue the wire in place because I found that it doesn't need to be. Now see, I'm, I'm up in the air. I'm going to come down, come down with my thumb here and just kind of put it back where I want it. I wanted that towards the back and just set it in. And now, if you look, there's our first wire. Laid in there, nice, smooth, got a little bit of a sway and up and over, just like gravity would tell it to do. So now, let's take this wire, because I like to work from the back to the front. So let's take, and you guys are going, are you kidding me? It's that easy. Yeah. It really is. Let's take this wire. I'm going to come down over with my finger, just like I did. Lay it down on there. Make sure I'm smooth. And I want to bring it up close to the uh, coil as I can. Bend this back down inside. Give it a little bend around. Remember gravity. And now that one looks like it it'll drop right in there nice and nifty so we'll come up snip it see how it's sticking up here take my tweezers and trust me this will look a lot better when you do it because I would hold this so close to my chest it's not even funny, and I'm going to have to do something so that I can get it to twist over. Like that. Push it back down on the, on the valve cover. There's wire number two. I'm not on the distributor. And this is a, a little... This is very difficult to do on screen here, or on the camera. I got my thumb on the distributor, and I swung that back down. And when I did that, I crushed it a little bit. So yeah, remember I said at the beginning, this part's a little bit finicky? It is, but when you're done, it's so cool. Just... Let's see there. Let's take a look at it. We're down on the distrib or on the um, valve cover. Gravity is our friend. It's going down around, giving a little swoop there. It's kind of swooping this way more, and I don't like that. So let's there. That's what I like. All right, I'm on this side. Let's run this one. Start bringing it back. I'm gonna go around the coil this time. And everything's gonna shift around and move. Be patient with it. See how I'm gonna drop it down, way down here. Now I'm gonna start with my tweezers. 
and I'm gonna roll this up just so it's easy to see. See how I'm far, I'm up here, I'm down on the valve cover, I'm dropped down and around, and now I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna cut this, uh, right about, boy, I had too much coffee today. Right about there. Gives me a little step. And all I'm going to do now, while I'm holding everything, is give that a bend and give it a tuck. And that'll go right there. That's number three. What do we got? Three or four minutes in here? This one I'm going to push down a little bit. And I love the solder. It stays. I'm not worried about gluing anything up in here. I don't have to. Let's do this one now. Where's it going to go? Let's do it across the coil. So remember, right here I have a hole drilled. There's going to be a little piece of pipe come out and underneath the, uh, the air cleaner. So we don't want to block that. So we're going to take this and we're going to drop it back. My thumb is in the way again, I apologize. Spin it around. I'm gonna drop it back behind this. I'll cross over. I'm gonna come down. Here. And I pushed it down a little bit and I let it come around. I'm gonna bend it and I'm gonna bring this up. Let's snip it high here. Give me a little room to play with. I'm going to snip it high. And we're going to roll this. Put my finger here. And I'm going to roll this around. So it's right there. Pull it out some. Push it down. And see, it'll come right back. Gives that little spring. Look at it. I got it dropping. It's pulling away. Nothing, no gaps on the valve covers. So gravity is our friend. That's four. That quick. Let's take this one. And I'm going to come around. The front again of the coil but I'm gonna kind of thread the needle here. I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna take my toothpick. I'm gonna shove this one down. And I'm gonna cut this off right here, like that. Now, it's laying on top of the other one, so I don't have to have a huge Again, I'm going to spin it around because I'm working with the camera. I don't have to have a huge swoop in it. So get my thumb back on top. Take this. Give it a bend and we're going to cross over. Now when I did that, I moved this one out. And yeah, they're bouncing around a little bit. But this is all you got to do. Just bring it back up and put it in there. Take that one and push it down in. Figure out where you want to put them. See, I did that and I pushed that up. I don't want that. I that that gap um, underneath the valve cover really messes things up. So where can I put this? Right there. Easy peasy. Number five. Check it out. Looking pretty good. See, I know this one's up and it kind of looks weird with that swoop. So I'm going to twist that. And when I do, I'm going to kind of twist it up and push it down. And now I'm sticking up just a smidge. See how it's sticking up just a smidge? Let's take it, pull it away a little bit, push it down past. Bring it up and it'll just lock itself in right there. And like I said, I'm not paying attention to the 
firing order. I'm just making them look good. That's five. Where are we at now? We're 10 minutes into this, maybe? Probably feels like six hours because of all the prep work you have to do. And there is a bunch. But how cool is this? Drop this one down. What's going to push? It's going to push some of the other ones out of the way a little bit. We'll fix that. I'm pushing with my hand. And kind of just see how I pushed straight down. That dropped it down inside where the uh, intake is. And now it's coming straight up. So let's put it there. I'm going to snip it off. Right there. Get my thumb back on it. And I hate putting my thumb on because, like I said earlier, I had to coat that whole valve cover <laughs> with liquid chrome. My multile, multile, I guess, pen. Because there was no chrome on it. So, anyhow, back to this. I got one wire sticking straight up. See it here? I'm going to come over here and I'm going to kind of pin it with my thumb. I hope you can see that. I'm going to pin it with my thumb right here. I'm going to take my tweezers. Bend it around. And I can tell you right now that it'll, it, it looks a lot harder than it is because I'm struggling trying to keep my dang snicker bar fingers out of the uh, camera. So when you do it, it's going to look a lot better than that. And I'll tell you what, dang it, man, when you look at this thing, that looks pretty darn good already. That's six. How about the next one here? We're going to come back and I'm going to put it right in here. So I'm going to come back. Oil filler's right there. So we're going to come behind it. I'm going to drop that down. I'm going to follow the other one. And you know what I like to do every once in a while is I like to cross over. To so see, I'm crossing over this wire. And I'm going to drop it down inside, all the way down where the other ones are. And then I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm going to roll it up. And I'm trying not to make a real sharp 90 there. Although that's going to be against the firewall where nobody's ever going to see it. But I'm down. I'm over. Gravity's taking it down and around. I'm coming up. Let's snip it off. Right about here. How's that? Snip it off. Now I'm going to come over with my thumb. I'm going to drop my thumb on the distributor. I'm going to twist my head around upside down like an owl. I'm going to just take this. And we're going to put it in place. It's sitting a little high. Push it past. And it's on. Ta-da! Let's give it a little shove in. There you go. We're at seven. In... As many minutes, maybe. I got an opening over here, so this last one's going to just come straight back around. Like this. And I'm going to run it straight over to it. So get my thumb down. Push that down. Toothpick. Push it down into that hole. With the toothpick. Make it look a little bendy. Like that. Coil still sticking out. Nice. I'm up in the air big time here because it's stuck to my finger. So we're going to push again into the valve cover like that. I see that nice little curve in there. Come back up. Snip it off above. She's cut. Come in here. I can't get my hand on the distributor like I like, so we're going to have to finicky with this just a little bit. Take that one. Give it a bend down. 
and around uh, my um, tweezers caught it and just kind of set it into place. Ba boom. Guys, I hate to say this, but that's eight wires right there. Quick, easy. It's not quick. It takes a while. I mean, it, it really does. There's a lot of prep work for it. But check that out. The one thing that you cannot do, okay, is do not put your exhaust valves or your exhaust manifolds on. If you do, they're just going to be in the way. But now, look at that. Look at how cool. I can play around with that, get it to lay in there just perfectly. And man, that's a win in my book. I don't know about yours. Take that as something. I think I got a good scale. I got good lay in there. Gravity is your friend. Let's set this down a minute. We got one more wire to do. And that's the coil wire. Take that. Glue it. Just like that. Get the glue out the way. I am right-handed. So I'm going to grab it with the tweezers, flip it around, grab it with my hand. The reason why I use the tweezers so much, and I'll tell you what, I didn't even need to cut this. There's a coil wire. There's a coil wire. I got seven more of them, if you think about it. So if this doesn't look right, we can always redo it. Come in. And right now, just going to put that into place and let it dry. With that one, I'm just going to take it literally and make a little bend over, drop it in there. I'm going to make sure that my bend stays lower than this high off of my carburetor. The reason is, is that's how high the, uh, the <laughs> air cleaner is. And I know that with the air cleaner in place, my hood's gonna close. So as long as this is a little bit lower than my air cleaner, I know that when it's in place, when I drop my hood in there, it's not gonna sit on there like this, where I've done that before, and it really makes you look stupid. I had to cut the coil wire out, and then redrill it, and then put a new coil wire in. But fortunately, I only had to drill the coil because <laughs> I don't glue anything to the distributor. That way when I'm messing around, see, I don't like this. So I can do this and give it a little shove. And it's nice in place. This one's a little bit high. Push it down. And now it's in place. It's it's so simple. Nobody's going to sit there and go, hey, man, you, you, you know, whatever. And the whole time I was talking, that glue dried or dried enough to where I can do this. I'm going to cut my wire. Right there. I should make a pile of uh, coil wires. Now what I want to do is I want to give that a little bit of life too. So I'm going to take my, my toothpick. Let's do it this way. And I'm going to kind of hold it on the carb like that. Take my th thumb. Yeah, that'll move. Take my thumb and bend it around. Now see that gave it an arch. Take my finger and just drop it in there. And dang it. There's your engine wired. Just like that. Easy. Move on those out of the way. I'm going to grab my engine stand. We're going to throw this on it for a second. Hey, if you like these, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know somehow that you like them, and I will keep making them. Um, and, and let me know if you don't, so I'm not wasting my time.